welcome to this uh, little overview and exploration of what is known as the Siebel XSL to XML Convertor. Uh, this is a business service that has quite a history in Siebel CRM. If you followed along on the Siebel Hub channel, there was a famous Siebel Friday where there was a rumor that such a service exists, but some people reported they can't find it. Other people found it in their design repository. Now, the reason why this is a bit a, of a stealthy business service is that it was not included in all repository versions of Siebel CRM, albeit is always there as a Neo and in most importantly as the Java library that Oracle ships with your internal Tomcats. So let's explain a little bit what this business service is about. And its main purpose is, of course, JSON to property set conversion. So we have a little bit of a discussion and look at some examples how to use that business service. So first of all, we know that this business service exists in, let's say, higher versions of Siebel CRM. So if you're beyond 20.9 and you upgrade it after 20.9, then you will see it in your design repository. Or if you've done any repository upgrade, let's say 22.8 or higher, then uh, you also will see it in your design repository. But if you don't see it in your design repository, you can always create a custom business service based on the same C++ class, which is CSS Java Business Service, which of course gives it away as a Java Business Service, and have the same Java class in the user property. Uh, those Java Business Services, they live by this user property at class, pointing to the class, the class path, that then of course must be found in the char file on the internal Tomcat. So the base architecture for JBS is of course that the execution of the code happens on the internal application container. That is the SES Tomcat, the adjacent, or let's call it sidecar Tomcat for any Siebel server. And it has two main methods, which are not declared in the Oracle version, but you can declare these methods if you want to, or just call them. One is JSON2PS, which gives it away as converting a JSON string to a property set. So the input in the value of the incoming property set must be a, well, a valid JSON string representation. And the output will be a output property set of the type resp body, so response body, and its children will represent the input JSON. And this method is rather easy to use. So as long as your JSON string is valid, then you get an output, you get a property set representing uh, the JSON, in, uh, JSON input. Uh, the other way around, property set to JSON, is a little bit a head scratcher for most people as it sometimes works like a charm. Uh, sometimes there are some very strange error messages about primitive data types and so forth. Uh, so it depends on what type of property set uh, you input and it requires a specific property set format. So specific means that you have to follow some rules and those rules were simply not documented until 23.9, which is the reason I'm doing this video uh, to talk a little bit more about this business service as it's now officially and fully documented in the EAI guide, business processes and rules in 23.9 and higher. So we are going to check out this guide when we play around with that business service. So enough on this historic history lesson and uh, on the background of this business service. So let's see how this business service works. So here I am in web tools and 
it doesn't need to be 23.9 by the way so that documentation has just been added in 23.9 bookshelf but of course it works in an older Siebel version as well just to mention that so you see that I am lucky to find the Siebel XSL to XML Converter Business Service. A funny name, of course, uh, not just a converter, uh, but also that it does not really mention JSON in the name, but XSL and XML. Probably that was the initial and still available purpose of that internal business service. It's actually marked as hidden and not in external use. And if you read the comments, it says for internal use only, called by EAI Geronimo Business Service. Okay, another funny name. Uh, internal use only is relative. I would say my interpretation is that since it's now fully documented uh, in Bookshelf, if it's in Bookshelf, you can use it. So what I'm usually doing is that while you can perfectly use this business service, I create a copy of it. Uh, so I call it BCRM, JSON PS Converter, in honor of this incredible naming convention. And uh, keeping, of course, the same class. So when you copy it, it's there. Changing the display name, marking it as external use. So it's a custom business service. And then you can first check if your copy also includes that user property. So if you create it from scratch, you can still do it. You can just use that class CSS Java Business Service and add that user property at class for a value of com slash Siebel slash integration slash util for JBS XML util. So this is a Java class as you when you write the custom Java Business Service you do exactly the same but of course you have to write the Java code compile it into a jar put it in on your internal Tomcats, and then you can refer to any class within that Java library with the correct class path in this user property. And voila, you have a stub service, a business service which is executed by the C++ core of the Siebel object manager. But then all it does is basically do an HTTP call to the internal Tomcat a request literally to run the Java code and pass in, of course, the input and return the output. So the, the grunt work of the heavy, the heavy lifting of conversion is done in Java on the 64-bit Tomcat, like with any other CSS Java business service, a very useful technique because, well, the Java 64 code on the running on a separate Tomcat, of course, has a huge performance gain over, let's say, eScript. Uh, if you have ever tried to convert JSON and property sets at scale in eScript, you know what I'm talking about. So while, while or because this is a custom business service, I like to declare my methods. So they become a, available for anybody using that business service with a user interface, such as the workflow process designer or the business service simulator. Uh, so I have to follow, of course, the naming convention. So the official name of the first method is JSON2PS. And uh, the other way around is PS2JSON. So I'm not sure about the actual case sensitivity here. I found it to work with other casings, but that is a good casing if there is any. And the arguments for JSON2PS is the value argument, which is the value of the input property set, is a string. Again, this must be a valid stringified JSON. And the output is a hierarchy. So in the child property set of the output property set, uh, something with a type of resp body will be returned, carrying, of course, more children, a complete hierarchy, an arbitrary hierarchy, of uh, the property set that has been computed by the converter. So that is, of course, a black box. We have to accept what we get here. One of the benefits of having a custom business services, you can also, oh, let's say, even override 
or write some additional functions in eScript to grab the output and massage it even further. So that's just a theory, of course, but it would definitely work. And the other method, ps2json, um, so I put the link here in the comments so I remember where the documentation is. Um, well, uh, of course, just reverses that. So the input is uh, any hierarchy, an arbitrary property set. So uh, a child property set of the input property set, that is. And the output is a string in, re in the value of the output property set. You will re be able to retrieve your JSON string, your JSON object stringified. All right, so let's put this copy of business service to the test. So to test the JSON to property set method, which is the first we want to test, uh, we need an example uh, JSON string. So I've constructed something here that is displayed. Uh, I have a level one object that has a level two object. And this one has an array of, well, in this case, not objects, but a string and a, an integer. So a mixed data type array, which is perfectly fine in JSON and could come your way, let's say. So I'm going to test the waters a little bit, you might say. Then there's an int for property with a numeric value. There's string five, which of course is a string and level one itself has string one and int two. So several properties in different levels and most importantly one little array to see what the outcome is. So this is my test string. Let's copy that and let's go to the classic test bench. Uh, I have inspected my workspace since I have not delivered uh, the business service and I've created already uh, a, a few records in the simulator main list applet. One for my new custom business service and the JSON to PS method. So if I create an input property set now, all I need in the value is a valid string. So I'm just brutally copy pasting the stuff here that I use for my test. So you see it has warts and all, uh, line breaks and, and so forth, but it should still be okay. So let's run this and we get a response body. So that's the output property set type. And it has a child of level one. We can see that already. So if we go down that hierarchy, remember uh, level one included level two. So you see that this um, goes into the child of the property set and level one also had string one and int one. So if you, of course, you know how to deal with property sets. Um, it's quite clear that 200 has become a string because in property sets, everything's a string. Uh, so we, we'll deal with that later. So that's level one and now level two included that array and something interesting happened here. Whenever it encounters an array, it creates a child of type with a prefix list of and then the name of the property itself. So let's take a look at this. So here we just have array three. It creates a wrapper called list of array three. So level two has uh, these properties in four and string five and this array. So this becomes a child property set and this one has children for each array member. And they all have the same type, which is the ar array name. And they have the same property key lm underscore underscore. That's two underscores value. So the element value, and here's the value I put in. So for comparison, we have one 
element with a value of s val 1 and one with a value of 300 just convert it to strings because that's what it is right in property set when you read that uh, there is no real indicator that this has been an integer uh, which might cause some trouble but again that is something we are going to look at so if I save this to a file of course I get a file and this is just the XML representation of that output property set in the simulator but we can clearly see the level one includes level two and we can also clearly see that even the integer values passed in as integer in the JSON are now strings. So we have successfully converted JSON to property set with a little bit of loss of information as integers are no longer integers, etc. But the array is an array in the sense of a property set, a list of things. <laughs> so now let's reverse it. Let's put this output to the input and let's try and call the ps2json method. And boom chaka, yeah. <laughs> That's what you see quite often when you experiment with that ps2json method. So what do we get here? Business service call returned error code, ids, rest obxsl error one, PS JSON converter process callback for PS to JSON. The input property lm underscore underscore value, we've seen that before, does not contain prefix info of JSON data type to apply conversion. For example, string lm underscore underscore value. Okay, that's interesting. So you just have to read this and you can see that there is some special input format required for anything that's named lm underscore underscore value. So these array members. Okay, so let's try to get that going. So uh, let me go into the input argument. And that array was in level two. And here we have the two children. So it's all about these property keys so that the first children has the first value in the array. And we must designate it, as, we must prefix the element array members name with the primitive data type. So here I am in the new bookshelf guide, so 23.9 or higher in the Business Processes and Rules Guide of the EI. You can find at the very end of the guide, or let's just go just go to the What's New chapter. Uh, what's New for 23.9 tells us there has been a new section edit, conversion between JSON property sets, which is the documentation we talked about. So you see that it's at the very end of the guide. <laughs> And let's scroll down a little bit. There is the inf code we're going to look at, etc. But what I'm looking for is is actually this list and I just found out while recording this that in the PDF <laughs> there is a note so make sure to download the PDF for this uh, there is a list for these arrays of primitives uh, so you see the full list of possible prefixes you can use string for strings integer for integers and so forth quite self-explaining so it's in the PDF actually which uh, is a little bit weird but let's not worry about that too much 
So we're back in the simulator, so we're changing that to string, that's going to be a string. So now the converter knows convert this to a string, and now we need to tell the converter that 300 is an integer. Always use underscore after that. Okay, so we change the array member's property names or keys to include that primitive information. And now let's run it again. And this time, touchdown. Oh, not quite. So if you look carefully, let's let me copy that out. So that's definitely a JSON string. That's a good thing, a good thing to have. Let's just con pretty print that. Yeah, that looks almost exactly like the input. Uh, the order is not in the same way, um, but that's what the bookshelf guide says as well. Uh, okay, and that is a num an integer, but that's not an integer. That's neither. Um, okay, so we have to tell the converter what data type uh, it has to be, what primitive data type it has to be. So for every single property that is, not just for the array members. So here I have another integer uh, called int2, so close but not close enough. So let's see what happens if we add integer underscore. And the strings obviously are fine, but let's just for test call it string string one, string underscore. And there was another integer in level two, if I get it right. Yeah. So, so you see the naming convention is very important of your input property set. As for the data type that is then in the converted JSON, might be important for external system to receive an integer or a number as a number and not a string. Okay, so let's try one more time. Let's run this, and while it looks very similar, it's definitely different. Let's just compare this. And we have an integer where there should be an integer. Okay, so within an array, the service complains about this, but outside of an array, with just regular, let's say, properties, the converter does not complain, but it also does not really care. It just converts everything to a string. Right, so lesson learned here. Um, read the documentation using the PDF in this, at least in this version. So here's the whole chapter. And uh, of course, I'm not going to scroll or read the chapter to you here in this video. You can do this by yourself. Um, but uh, take care to understand this array behavior. And the array behavior becomes apparent if you really work with list of things a lot. And where do you work with list of things a lot? You guessed it, in Siebel messages. If you have an integration object representation of uh, Siebel data or any, let's say, integration object that is, you always have that list of container. So that's a pattern we can recognize. So let's get a little bit further. Let's do something more realistic than my demo, my first little hello world JSON. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm preparing to run a query with the EI Sable adapter. And I'm, I have a record with a primary row ID 1-6, which is in the Sable sample database. And I'm going to use the sample account SIA standard integration object as the output integration object. 
So if I run this, I should yield a Sable message as the child. And let's just save it to a file real quick so we can open it and see that there is some data in there, this typical property set structure of the what the EI Siebel adapter deals with. Um, a Siebel message with a notice list of, <laughs> and the account has a list of business address and list of contact and uh, so forth. So these list of containers are of course property sets. So we now have a very complex um, yeah, Siebel message type property set, but it's just an ordinary property set. All strings, by the way. And now let's try and convert it to JSON. So I'm moving it to the input as it is, as you would do move it forward in a workflow process. And let's do PS to JSON one more time with this Siebel message. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. No error this time. It was just happy with all the information in it. And that is looking like JSON. A little bit surprised here. I <laughs> didn't get an error message, but good to know. And let's just pretty print this. Okay. And yep. Alrighty. That is, we can make out the uh, properties of the Siebel message itself. Notice that Siebel message is like gone. The Siebel message wrapper, is, we're just inside the Siebel message. That's another behavior uh, I noticed. It, the ps to json takes the first child it finds in the input property and that's what it uses as the outer boundary, let's say. So this is the Siebel message and here's the list of accounts, which is, well, an object with one account, could be more, that's the account. And there's the list of organizations. So notice that there is a list of account organization uh, is not present in the JSON, but it's well, um, present in a way that account organization, what was list of, is now an array. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so here we have list of account underscore organization, and here we have account underscore organization, an array of, well, individual organizations. Same for business address with list of business address and here are the addresses, list of contact, an array of contacts. Contact has a list of business addresses. It becomes an array and so forth. But still it's a valid representation of the hierarchy of the data and uh, also of the property set. Okay, so that was interesting uh, for sure. And you might wonder, can we read that back in and let's say um, update Siebel? Can we do it in reverse? Let's try. So we move it, we move the big JSON uh, to the input. And, and now we want to convert that to a Siebel message. Um, using JSON to PS. Uh, very confident here that it will not work out. Well, it does. <laughs> uh, JSON to PS is just taking what's in the JSON, but it generates, uh, well, of course, it generates a child of type response body, which is what it does, which has a list of sample accounts. We kind of lost the uh, Siebel message container on the way, um, but let's just give it a try and just up put this as an input argument into the EI Siebel adapters, uh, let's say, upsert. 
and well the first thing is input message missing header properties not unexpected since uh, this is actually the the Siebel message uh, but it needs to be a child of the input property set so um, it's not completely compatible output and input uh, but that's of, of course okay you can massage it you can map it uh, etc for example in uh, in eScript that you write and uh, Oracle has provided us in the new bookshelf guide with not only a good explanation of the array behavior the prefix for the primitives um, but also an example <laughs> uh, which is a uh, well example eScript code for a eScript to create um, well, a hierarchical property set structure containing information about automobiles, a list of trucks, list of cars, notice the list of, <laughs> uh, and then using also a special syntax that's described here. I found it that's not really required, but you can follow this. Uh, list of type uh, list of something underscore underscore primitive which is described above you can do it or not and then the typical uh, as as discussed array members uh, required to have that prefix before element underscore underscore value so um, this is of course a lot of eScript and uh, I've prepared this to run let's take a quick look so I just copied that code from bookshelf and I cleaned it up a little bit so it runs in uh, the devpops eScript playground uh, and I have also modified the code to use uh, my new bus business service uh, the original bookshelf code of course uses the standard business service so there are also some quite interesting comments there but uh, we get it that it builds albeit a little bit let's say um, pro in a productive manner a property set structure describing uh, vehicles uh, right the trucks and cars uh, with uh, a tire count and of course it tries to be uh, educational in a way that it uses integers and strings uh, along the way so we'll just see what comes out of that so uh, let me copy that code uh, let's start the devpops eScript playground which already has the code let me just replace it and uh, the eScript playground of devpops uh, thanks to Slava who created this uh, uses a log function and I can just log a property set out so the LPS output which is added to the outputs um, uh, yeah I think that would just work uh, I can log it out so I can see it below here so let's just run that code and of course it doesn't work okay found found the issue uh, of course this outputs doesn't work in uh, the eScript playground so I just comment it out and I get a log of the output which is a perfectly fine uh, let's just make sure we can see it all a perfectly fine JSON representation of that property set the script code is generating so let's check it out so it's valid JSON and we have well uh, what was list of cars became an array of objects that describe cars so such as the Tesla here the tires array is well a little bit weird of it does it have six five or four tires <laughs> I don't know but these are definitely strings well the numbers spelled out uh, and one has one truck here 
has the tires array as real integers so not strings but integers so while most of this stuff is string so what the example code from bookshelf um, uh, teaches us is a list of a list of type becomes an array and if you use the correct primitive then uh, you will also get the correct primitive data type like integer in your output as requested by the external system probably I guess so and let's do the final test the reverse so the script has produced a property set that is then converted to a JSON string so now let's use JSON 2PS uh, to convert the string back to a property set so um, let's copy that so that's the JSON as it is output by the business service or the eScript and let's run it using JSON 2PS runs like a charm of course oh, but we are curious it's a big file so I'm going to use the XML output to check it out and uh, we can see that uh, what was an array in the incoming JSON is now list of <laughs> list of trucks list of tires uh, and notice that this one while definitely had integers in the input JSON is now strings because it's a property set and property set is always a string so yeah again the learning here is array becomes list of in the conversion from JSON to property set uh, when when reading through the new section in the guide you will also notice a, a paragraph about skipping a particular property set by adding a suffix to the type uh, underscore underscore skip underscore underscore two underscores wrapper um, so skip wrapper now the wrapper is let's say um, a property set level uh, child property set let's see how this works out when we use it and in my modified example code I did not make many modifications here but one is that I have something I can comment out here so the list of cars so list of trucks and list of cars is at the same level and I'm replacing the list of cars just the type setting is now list of cars following that suffix okay so let's copy that code and run it in the script workbench oh it's the wrong one again i have to comment that out okay so that while it looks the same it's a little bit smaller now so let's compare it So this was the output without skip wrapper. So we have cars and trucks. Remember list of cars, list of trucks became array. So now the new string is, well, it still says cars and trucks, but actually uh, something is missing here and it's actually just one car so it's not an array anymore as you notice cars is not an array anymore it's just one car the original was uh, two cars so seems that it just keeps the first so i'm not sure what to make of this I'm just following the instructions bookshelf so it 
skips something, but I would have expected uh, that the entire structure is skipped. But that's not what happened. As we can clearly see, there's still one car. Um, okay, that's interesting. Good to know the behavior. Good to have uh, a few tests, a few rounds of testing before you actually use that feature. Okay, so yeah, that was a little bit of a journey through history and uh, to learn more about the interesting JSON to property set conversion capabilities of the existing standard business services now being finally documented in Bookshelf. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.